I think skyscrapers grew in New York because skyscrapers were about change and modernity and ego. And New York was about all those things in the 19th and early 20th century, even is now. And New York was a place that was ideal for this. It was the new capital of wealth and power and technology and money. So everything conspired to make New York the perfect place to build this new genre of building, this new kind of amazing modern symbol, the skyscraper. What's really good about a tall building is convenience and cost. It gives you open spaces, gives you sunshine, gives you easy communications. It's, it's, it's vital to modern society. We were a little company in Seattle, Washington. Um, never worked in a Park Avenue office building <laughs> or even close to one. Having worked with the architect Minoru Yamasaki before, uh, many projects, and he was able to obtain the commission as the architect for the World Trade Center. I learned to, to work with, with uh, Yamasaki, and we became good, really good friends. The World Trade Center was different from other buildings in many, many ways. Uh, looking at it very personally, I can say that, that we brought into the technology of building design and construction a lot that was never there before that has led to more efficient, more beautiful, uh, less costly buildings. It was remarkable. Um, the project had different kinds of elevators and it had, it had um, a whole series of material changes that had never been used before. Uh, Mr. Yamasaki wanted closely spaced columns, so that was great for us. Uh, we used that. And then we created long span space inside of the building. very difficult time for me and I thought that I thought that developers and architects would cross us off their list because the buildings had fallen and uh, nobody knew why really the fact that so many died uh, you always have to ask yourself could I have made it a little stronger and uh, and yet and, and yet at the same time, I would say that, that the very few buildings could take that kind of assault and not go down immediately. So my fear that I was through as an engineer, that that would be the end of it, turned out to be quite the contrary. Suddenly I was busier than before. I think the first really big independent commission on the, on the following 9-11 was the Bank of China Tower. The architect Pei, I am Pei, who I knew very well, I called and asked me to stop by and he showed me models of what he wanted to do and so wind was everything and the stiffness of the building and the strength was vital and he understood that perfectly. Uh, for us, the first really big project was the Shanghai World Financial Center. The issues with the, with the Shanghai World Financial Center were aesthetic and having to do with security. That is, the, the realism, realism of 9-11 was there. Shanghai World Financial Center was a big step forward in that regard. When we, we started working on Torre Picasso, we came to understand that it would be, and it did in fact become, the tallest building in Spain for 
some years. Then later, uh, we worked on the two towers of Puerto de Europa were with Philip Johnson, and they were unique in that, in terms of modern construction, they were, I believe, the first buildings that deliberately leaned out, out of the vertical and across the street from each other is very unique, of course. No struts across. The <laughs> Beyond designing things, uh, uh, I'm, I'm pretty active. I, I taught at Princeton University for 10 years and uh, I lecture constantly at various universities and organizations around the world. Uh, right this very minute, um, working on a book in that book, I'm trying to explain to, mostly to young people, with an emphasis on young women, uh, about the importance of structural engineering in the world of architecture and how, um, how they can use their own minds and their own ideas to move ahead in their profession and make an impact on the world. So I'm not so interested in my impact, but on theirs.